Um, I'm here today to talk with students about uh, if you are interested in going to college. Now, one thing I would like to first of all clarify is college and universities are actually different. and we all go under sort of the umbrella of higher education. You may have gone to some of the previous um, sessions, which were colleges at that time, uh, which, well, they're colleges, but uh, in that case, you may have gone to something with uh, North Texas or Vernon College, or you may have thought of something else along those lines. Typically, though, colleges are offer more of what we call the trades and um, certifications and hands-on learning. That's not always the case. They do have uh, English and history and things along those lines, but generally those are two-year degrees. At Midwestern, what we offer, and this is at most universities, is that we do offer four-year degrees. Now, I say four years, but that means if you are a full-time student and you take the recommended amount of classes per semester. Now, um, universities have what we call professional degrees. That's not saying the other things aren't professional, but with professional degrees we are looking at your typically more administrative or you all have skills that will be very different than what you might find at the colleges. We do have right here that um, one way to find that out about any school, not just Midwestern, but any school you're thinking of attending is going to their admissions page. On the admissions page, they will generally have what kind of degrees do we offer. At Midwestern, you're going to have things such as your science and math, business, fine arts, health sciences, social services, and education. Now, you may have even seen around town that there's a lot of billboards around here and it says, I want to be a therapist, and then it tells you about programs out at Midwestern, or I want to be a musician, or I want to be a radiologist, and those are exactly what we're looking at, which is like, do you know what you want to do? Well then, where do you find the training that you need for what you'd like to do? At Midwestern, just like other universities all over, the first step is to apply to that university or college. Now that doesn't mean your, your heart might be set on going there, it just means that you need to get an application in. Some people do several applications to different universities. I will warn you though, it costs money just to apply, which is not the first amount of money you'll be giving out. Now at Midwestern, uh, as in most places in Texas, you will go to a website that's a call, called Apply Texas org.org and what you'll have there is kind of a universal application every college every college every university we're all going to have different standards to get in typically at college they're more what we call open admissions at universities though you have to have a certain criteria to get in. Now the criteria is going to be different from university to university. Needless to say, some of the universities like University of Texas, Texas A&M, they get a lot of applications and so their requirements are generally pretty high up there. At Midwestern, we will base it, usually we have based it on your GPA, where you are at in your high school standing and the types of courses you've taken in high school. Then we top it off with what did you make on the ACT or the SAT or ACT. I'm not sure if I said both of those, ACT or SAT. When we are not in COVID, that is one of the requirements. For this year, we have waived that because it is getting so difficult if you can even take an ACT or an SAT right now. If we do get back to offering those again, the state can go back to offering those, then what you would need to do is be sure that you take those with accommodations. 
on that. It might change your, your score. If it changes your score, you possibly can meet the entrance requirements. I mentioned all those things, and it's not just a either or. It's sort of a this or this, this or this. So it kind of all works together. I leave that to the admissions counselors. It's real complicated. Now, you real me uh, remember that I mentioned that there is uh, an application fee, and I said that's that's not the first that you're going to get. In high school, you are, and actually all public school, you are getting receiving what they call free public education as part of the law. That doesn't apply to higher education. Some people are not aware of the cost to that. At Midwestern, we have, let's just say one semester, and a semester goes from September to December, and then there's another semester from January until May. Now, let's look at that, and let's say one of those semesters for tuition and fees, it's estimated, it's not exact, but it's estimated your tuition and fees will be $4,500. That's that's a lot, right? Uh, and then the other one will be your room and board if you choose to live on campus. If you choose to live on campus, that's another estimated $3,500. So all together, we're talking about if you're a college student in four years, you would be actually paying out $64,000. Okay, well, if that sets you back a little bit and you're afraid, oh, I'll never be able to afford that, I can't do that. One of the important things to remember is that there are there is, let's say, help available. There are certain uh, ways, such as the FAFSA. You want to get with the financial aid office. Totally, I do not understand any of this. But they do. They can show you, based on your family's income, what you might be allowed. Now, some of it's free money. That's called grants. Some of it will be a loan that you will have to pay back. But there are a lot better rates uh, that you can get through certain things. Now, Let's say you've gotten into the university. Okay, so here you are. Now what? Automatically, your accommodations are not going to be just given to you. They're not going to follow you straight from high school. La la, you know, here I have my 504 plan, and that's it. It doesn't happen that way. At a college or a university, what you will need to do is, first of all, you've got to ask. You've got to ask for services. Nobody's going to come out say, oh yeah, you've got this. It's not going into any academic records, anything along those lines. So what you will need to do then is you will need to find your Disability Support Service Office. Now I could go under all different names, Disability Support, Student Assistance. Usually the easiest way to find it on a website is just to Google disability and you'll probably, that will probably pop up first. Um, and another way, of course, is just to ask someone on campus if they know where that office is located. Located. Now, once you do that, when you walk into the office, you will need to fill out. They'll, they'll give it to you. You can find it online. I know at Midwestern, ours is online. Go to the Disability Support Services webpage, and on it, there will be a place to apply for services. And then there's a little tricky part called documentation guidelines. Those are very, very important. So when we get that current information, then it goes into a process of review, and then you'll be called in to have an intake with a disability counselor. Once that is done, then we can start talking about the type of accommodations. Again, what we're going to be looking at right now is just because it's on your IEP or your 504 plan, that doesn't mean, okay, everything is going to happen here the exact same way. It won't. One of the important things to remember, I might take some parts of your, your 504 plan, they might be relevant, they might be things we use, but there's a big difference between high school and college. Actually, there's many differences between high school and college, but one of the biggest differences is that in high school, your accommodations are all about your success. They're all about whatever it takes to be sure that you're a successful student. 
in college, in higher education, what we're looking at is it's about your access to services. If you have a hearing disability, we need to, your barrier is that you can't hear a lecture. We need to be sure that that barrier is taken care of. If you cannot see because you are legally blind, the text board with all the notes on it, we have to find a way to provide those notes for you. Even if you have a learning disability or ADHD, we're looking at can you keep up with the lecture or is it more difficult for you than for students without this disability to do? So the idea is it's all about access. If you're taking tests and you do have, say, a reading disability, dyslexia, something along those lines, or a visual impairment, you know what? We can't give you that exact time that the rest of the class gets because you either can't see or you can't read as quickly as the other students. Unless it's a reading test, then that doesn't apply. We want to know what you know about the subject. So that's the way we set up accommodations. We're always looking at what kind of limitation does that condition cause to you as a student. There are some other things that are very important. That's also the difference between college and high school. One of those is you are now an adult, which means that even though your parents can be involved, they are not the ones that are going to do the applying. They are not the ones whose responsibility it is um, to be sure that you get the services you need, that you use the services you need. You are the adult and you're in charge at this point. If you have any kind of difficulty, again, there's not that network just set up that's going to say, hey, I've noticed you're not doing as good in your schoolwork, or I've noticed you're having this problem. You have that problem, it's up to you. You and the Disability Services Office need to work together, but the Disability Services Office does not know what's going on in your classes. So if you're having any difficulty, you need to come to them. And maybe it's something like, the disability office will say maybe you need tutoring well we don't offer it here but i can tell you who does so we can act also as a referral network to you maybe you come in and you're just very anxious you've got a roommate won't let you study won't let you do this or do that well you know what we've got a counseling center we can refer you to that counseling center um let's talk about some of the things you need to do to uh, really feel comfortable at school, let's say at a university or a college. First of all, go in with a positive attitude. Look at it, no matter what your experience has been with any education or how scared you are or, or what's going on, there's going to be many more people who are going to feel the same feelings. The most important thing is to go in, look at it as an adventure and something that can open a lot of doors for you in the future and hopefully this can be a good experience for you. The other thing that you want to look at is you have to get organized. Um, I say that a lot. I'm sure your parents have said it a lot too. But there's a lot of freedom that comes with college. There's also a lot of places where you can go wrong by using that freedom maybe a little too much. You need to learn things about how to advocate for yourself. You also need to learn how to ask questions. Don't be shy. If you are shy, and it is a problem for you, then again, come to your Disability Services Office because we're going to work with you. If you've got questions, we don't mind answering those. Um, maybe you need a referral to somewhere. We don't mind giving you that referral to it. Um, so that's always something really important then to, to know it's okay to ask questions. As I had mentioned, there are a lot of people out there who are, this is their first semester too. Um, and then be really sure that you do have an honest idea of what your skills and your talents are. Um, don't bog yourself down with too many of a certain type of class if you know that's not your strong suit. You want to be sure you can sit down with an advisor. Don't just let them say, okay, you need to take this, this, and this. That's another thing you need to be informed about. If it looks like all your classes are going to be really difficult for you, let's say you're not a science person, you're more of an artsy person, and you're just, you know, just loaded down, it looks like with a science class or something like this, well, um, you may have to say, yeah, I, I can't take quite all of that this semester. Always work with your advisor. Your advisor will work with you closely to see about 
you know where your skills are really at. Um, again, we don't want to put you in something that to start with is going to make you feel um, like maybe you can't do college because I've seen a lot of students have a really rough first semester and then the second semester they're saying, okay, I've got my feet under me now, I know what's going on. When I did advising, I used to tell my students, I would rather that you get bored and say, gee, I wish I had um, I'd taken a couple more classes rather than say, I am swamped, I'm stressed out, I don't feel like I can do this again. So it's always really important. First semester, look at the idea of trying to get that balance in there. I'm here for classes. I'm paying money for it. I want to be sure I do those classes. At the same time, get involved with the university. Activities, organizations, things that you like to do, that can be so helpful when you're looking at. Now I've got things I maybe don't like to do, like study for math or something like this. So it's really important that you feel like, hey, I've got a pretty good balance here because I don't want to dread just going to school, something like that. So get involved. And um, I guess that's the main things. So um, any questions? Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. We do have a few questions. Um, the first one is, do you offer anything with music? You know, it's interesting you should ask that because actually we have a very fantastic music department. I don't know if you're interested in vocal or instrumental or uh, whichever direction you want to go, but we do have some, actually I'm surprised, some world-renowned, you might say, uh, people on staff. The dean of our music department Dr. Camacho has performed all over Europe and the United States in his uh, areas, the piano. Um, we have uh, experts on e harp. Um, we've got saxophone, trombone, uh, and of course now with our football team, if you were in marching band, we've got that. Our vocalists have gone all over the world. Believe me, I've known a couple that have actually performed up at the Metropolitan Opera even. So yes, we do have music courses and they are very good, by the way. We do have time for just one more question. What advice would you give a student interested in having a career with animation, storyboarding, film, ETC? You know, that's uh, one of those fields that now, uh, interestingly enough, we actually have started developing one of those. Uh, it is also over in our fine arts department. Uh, that's where the music is, but it's also under our fine arts. And when you are looking at things like that with creation, now uh, some of that will go back into some of just regular artwork also for your basics. But we are looking at all the animation in the technology technology that is coming through now. And by the way, they've just spent a lot of money over in that department, uh, updating the buildings and updating the technology. So that is a very good area right now. Awesome, thank you. Unfortunately, that is all we do have time for today. Um, thank you all for attending the MSU session. Each session is being recorded and will be uploaded to our YouTube page after the event. Thank you.